So Patricia, can you tell me a little bit about what you were doing this summer? I've been walking the Camino de Santiago, which is the pilgrim route from France to Spain, across northern Spain, and I walked 500 miles. And who were you doing it with, with and why did you do it? Um, I did it with my family, um, my brother-in-law Paul, um, his tetraplegic, he had an accident in 2000 and it was his idea to do this. And as a family, we all agreed that it would be nice to go with him and support him and his wife, uh, Vicky, who is my sister. And it was a, a small team of us to go along with Paul to do, you know, to walk with, the, with him. For those people viewing who aren't um, familiar with spinal injury terms, what does tetraplegic mean? Um, it's, it, with Paul's condition, he is a, a C4. So he is paralyzed from the shoulders down so he doesn't have the use of his hands or his arms he's completely paralyzed um, he can talk he doesn't need a tracheotomy but he does um, he can't feed himself or anything like that uh, the Camino de Santiago is a really ancient pilgrim route yes. maybe one of the oldest in Europe yes. um, how did being on pilgrimage and the sacrifices and the struggles that come with that, especially when you're going with someone who's tetraplegic even. Yes, in all fairness, I didn't know an awful lot about the walk until it was Paul's idea. It sounded a lovely walk <laughs> until when we looked into it and we realized um, the distance we would be walking um, and then it was then right, okay, we ought to start training. Um, we went in rather blase, but it was with great enthusiasm. So that was how it was started. The experience along the walk was um, up and over the Pyrenees, was extremely hard. Um, we had daily challenges. And just for an able body walker, it was challenging enough but to have the responsibility of helping Paul in his sports wheelchair was um, even more challenging. I think Paul was right raising funds for a fantastic charity called the um, Salisbury Spinal Injuries Trust, Yes, uh, which does amazing work. Um, yes. I know from my engagement with the Spinal Injuries Unit there. Yeah. Um, how can people support Spinal Injury Trust, Salisbury Spinal Injury Trust, um, now after the walk's finished if they're watching this? Um, Paul has a website and he intends to keep the website live, open, with regular updates. Now we've done this walk, we would like to do more walks in the future okay. and basically just bring awareness that there is life after wheelchair, after being um, invalid in a wheelchair. That's fantastic. Um, you said earlier that you didn't know a lot about the walk or about the pilgrimage, in mm. fact. Reflecting now, looking back on the whole trip, has the way that you think about who God is changed? No, it hasn't changed. But on the walk, I felt a huge sense of comfort. And the spiritual feeling was... It was just a huge feeling of being surrounded by people equally minded that you felt loved, you felt wanted and it was just such a lovely feeling. Met so many happy, lovely people and to me it was the spiritual side. Um, I don't particularly say I feel any particularly closer to God but I just enjoyed the walk as being part of a group. What lessons do you think that local churches here in the UK could learn from that sense of people being on pilgrimage to together? I think it's, the way I would look is to be there for each other. Though we had random acts of some people just wanting to help and just talking about everyday life, hearing people's life stories. Um, you know, some stories that we heard from people, their 
it would break your heart to hear what they've gone through and the reason that they were doing the, the pilgrim walk for their reason. Um, so, yeah, it would be to have the, the feeling of support and comfort. That, that is where... Sorry, I didn't answer. No, that. no, no, yeah. that's fine. It, these, are, these are actually these questions which are sort of metaphysical or the hardest to, mm. to answer. Thinking back, um, I've had a look at the various websites and mm. um, the slog through the Pyrenees, especially in the mm. mud and the rain. Um, that looks pretty challenging. For you, what was the most challenging part of the pilgrimage? Um, I think it was the... It was the, it was the physical and mental side of being organised for me. Um, all, the nice side of that, all I had was myself to think about once Paul was safe and he was back to his, his motorhome in the evening. But you had to be organised and think, right, I need my bag for this evening, but I need that for tomorrow. And it was the whole... The whole thing of making sure that we were sort, I was sorted, and had all my belongings that I needed. Because once you started the walk in the morning, and you realised you'd forgotten something important, you wasn't going to walk back to collect it from our base. Um, so it was, it was just getting yourself sort of organised, and also being out of my comfort zone, which I was many times. I was away from the family home. My husband could only join me for the first week and the third week. I was away from my two boys, although they're adults now. And it was just being away from, from home family life. Um, and being, like I said, very much sometimes out of comfort zone. So being in a hostel where sometimes I was sleeping in a room with 60 people. And you, I felt completely safe and secure. However, I wasn't in my own home environment. So that was the challenging side for me. Okay. Patricia, thank you very much. That's really um, lovely to hear.